in my recent video talking about Spider-Verse, I claimed that not all films work in animation. We see more gritty films like Logan or Joker as examples. I didn't think you can achieve something that hits you as hard without using real people for films like that. But then I saw a Netflix original that came out last year called Intergalactic, and I began to think. And the film was a romance film, and we've got plenty of those in animated movies, like the new Pixar film Elemental, or Nomi and Juliet. But Intergalactic really pushed the boundaries of what my mind considered possible in an animated film. It's rated R, and you can see it. It had sex scenes, although I'm sure that has been animated by many people. I haven't ever seen it in an official film. But even more interesting, Intergalactic works. It's such an amazing film, and it's one of the best that I've seen in the past few months. It moved me, and its animation was also just amazing, having a Spider-Verse style. But after watching this film, I want to know if there were many more adult animated films, so I searched up. I found 29 films, although I'm sure there's more, and that's not even starting to count anime, as even Intergalactic, it wasn't listed. The only film on the list which I outnight outright recognized was Sausage Party, but there were a lot of films from IPs I recognized. There were Mortal Kombat films, Resident Evil, the South Park film, and a whole lot of DC films. It was the DC films that really got me interested, though. I have heard much praise for the DCAU or the DC Animated Universe, but I never realized how much of it was rated R. This makes me more interested in checking out those films and also seeing films like Logan in if you can tap into any genre with animation and any rating, then the boundaries become truly unlimited with the stories you can tell. Animation has a soul that is hard to capture in live action, and a comment which I got on my Spider-Verse video explained that perfectly. Frank Sharma 522 says, I think when the movie is animated, the emotions required by the characters are portrayed more extensively, which let in turn, lets the director show what he wants to show, and he doesn't need to depend on the actor for the same. However, an exception is the Iron Man movie, because RDJ is an actor meant for Iron Man, and captures that persona really well. That comment hits the nail on the head of what I have felt towards animation. We'll talk about the Iron Man thing later. I knew there was something special about animation, but that explains it so perfectly, so thanks to you, Pranak. Animation has a chance to be more expressive without the dependence on an actor. Sure, you still have the vocals to worry about when it comes to performance, but a director can show whatever emotion he's trying to capture in a much easier way than in live action. So now, when I think back to my favorite animated themes of all time, with that comment in mind, that exaggeration of the motions comes to mind, and this is why what's probably my favorite animated scene works. For me, I want to look at the moment in the Owl House where Amity and Luz finally get together. I've always loved this scene, but now let's analyze how it works with this new lens on. We have the characters leaning super far back at first, and then we have Luz holding her hands together like this, and and, fit, and Amity's fiddling with her hand, and that's not just to mention the faces they're making. For Luz, she's so expressive, distorting her face when she's taking a deep breath. Or, what has to be my favorite part of the scene and what I've loved for so long is how round Amity's mouth is. I know that sounds weird, but she is normally so much more put together, so formal, and that smire, smile feels like the opposite of that closed off version of her we've seen, and it feels like the real version of her came out, and it expresses so much joy. It works so well. The scene would not have worked so well, though, if the Owl House was live action. It is that expressiveness that causes the scene to work, where even this budget TV animation captures so much more emotion than many feature films. The expressiveness is why The Lion King 2019 doesn't work among other reasons. The hyper-realistic look makes it hard for those characters to emote in any way. It's why I fear that no matter how good the writing on Mufasa may or may not be, the performances will probably fall fast. And with the right expressivity, films like Logan or Joker might even work better in animation. Seeing the breakdown of Arthur might be even more compelling in, with animation. Though, with a performance as amazing, you're going to have a harder time with that. Times like those, films like Joker are where live action can really shine. If you get an actor and a role that works together amazingly, 
In that case, the live action can be better. Those are the only ways that a live action film can express emotions better than animation. That's not to say in every case you want to express those emotions as much, maybe in a comedy, those emotions don't matter. Keep it live action. But if you want to express those emotions, for that to happen, the actors need to be the characters. Joaquin Fiener on Joker, RDJ as Iron Man, like the comment said, only in those roles can you say that live action really reigns supreme as far as emotions go. So I take back my statement from the last video. Films like Logan and Joker shouldn't be animated because they're dark scenes. They dark films. They shouldn't be animated because the actors are so damn good. Just as the last video, I don't say all this because I want everything to become animated. In fact, if that happened, I might begin to lose a lot of my love for animation and appreciation for the art of animation. What I seek to achieve with these videos is diversity. I don't want just live action films, nor do I want only animated films. I want a balance. In the last video, I talked about superhero films not working in live action due to reality problem where they're trying to be all silly and goofy, but it's just not working. I think that could cover much more than superhero movies as well, though. Just this summer, we have film franchises, which have just gone off the rails and probably should have died a long time ago. Indiana Jones is dealing with time travel. Fast and Furious, I, I don't think I even need to explain. Mission Impossible is just more of that same crazy, explosive, heist action movie. These franchises started off pretty grounded, but they've just become far too much. These franchises have stopped working in live action, so why not make new franchises in animation? Think of an Indiana Jones-esque Tomb Raider animated series of movies, or an animated heist film. These franchises have been run into the ground by being overmilked. The fact is, they need to get bigger every time, and that needs to end up somewhere. It's, it's gonna need to just drop off at some point, and like I said, just superhero films, they have that same problem where they're becoming too far-fetched to work in live action. And if animation can be used for everything, as these franchises begin to fall off, hopefully alongside the new live action film series, we get new animated ones from a variety of studios. I want more studios to make animation films. I truly hope films like Spider-Verse or Enter Galactic can herald in a new age of animation. I hope our culture can accept animation as a genuine medium for films to be made. And if we start to do that, if we start to get a more diverse set of animated films, I hope they'll be watched, and if good, enjoyed. Animation is truly unlimited with the stories that it can tell, but there are two things that can stop it being the companies and the audience. Animation isn't just a genre for children, but that is a video for another day. Anyway, so that's all I have to say. What do you think? Do you want to see more animated films? What types of animated films would work? And do you think animated films can save Hollywood? All that and more, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. I have made mention of previous my previous video about Spider-Verse. I talk about why animation should be more widely accepted in the superhero genre. So if you want to see why, check out this video. Subscribe in case I decide to make more videos in this animation saga that has begun on my channel. And if I and I do have one I'm working on, which I just hinted on recently in this video, and that's coming soon. Thanks for watching. I've been Fictional Fanatics, and until the next one, bye!